I've got a 4B, a 3B, and a 4H, and a graphite stick. Now, they're not specifically, I didn't really pick those for any, any real choice. I just wanted a couple of soft pencils and a hard pencil. And then the graphite stick's really going to come in perhaps where I want to get some darker marks and also um, some larger areas of shading and possibly just some bigger, bigger marks later on in the drawing. Okay. The other thing that I've got, which is pretty essential, is some putty rubber. So um, obviously I've needed that a fair bit to get some warmth into it and also to um, make sure that when I do rub with it, it is going to lift off. If you use it cold, which is this in its cold state and you try and rub it, it doesn't really take off the graphite very well. So you need to pull some off, knead it a little bit to get some warmth and, and, and make it a bit more pliable and then it's good to go. Okay, so let's leave that down there. I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to take a 2B pencil to start off with. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do, oops, without knocking the board, is just put some little um, marks as I normally do. So the four little marks, just to break up the larger area so that I can figure out where I'm going to place everything. <clears throat> so as normal the first thing i'm going to do is try and figure out where um the eye level is going to come and where i've kind of broken the or, or expanded the image it's about halfway it's not quite halfway it's just under halfway so if i take this as um just use my finger as a rough guide so halfway is going to be about there just under halfway i should say is about here. So I'm going to draw a line through. Now the reason this is important is because this is going to define how much we have above, i.e. sky buildings and so on, which are going to come into this area. And then below the eye level is going to be boats and water. Okay, so there's very, very little of the houses below this line. There's a bit with the stilts, but very, very little. The majority below this line is all that boat, the water and reflections, okay? In my image, I want to try and get the, the orange house or the house with the orange roof right at the top up here, kind of just cutting out of the, um, the picture frame and then everything's coming down from that um, orange tin roof. So the next thing I'm going to do is figure out roughly where that building, so the orange building, is going to start. And it's going to come in about uh, just over two thirds. So if I use my finger and thumb again, so that's going to be about right. So it's about a third of the way in I want that building to start. So it's pretty much on my third mark. So if I draw a line going up there, just nice and lightly, that's going to correspond to where the apex or the pointy bit of the roof on the orange building is going to be starting about that point. Okay. And I'm not going to draw it all in just yet. I'm just going to figure out where everything's coming. The next thing I'm going to do is try and find out where the basic line of perspective is coming so the angle because we've got a lot of buildings going all in that direction and they're all facing the same way it's going to be very very useful to put in a line of perspective so I'm just going to figure that out so what I'm doing is I'm holding my arm up and my pencil against the um, angle of the roofs and then I'm coming down to my work and that's about right. So that was a good guess. So it's coming down in this direction towards this corner. And if I carried it on, it would go all the way over and then hit my eye level out of the picture um, frame. Okay. So that's roughly the angle of those buildings. So that's part one. The next thing to do then is to figure out where the buildings are meeting the water line. So it's underneath my eye level. So it's coming in somewhere from about there and it's coming along to about here. 
So I'm going to have an angle going uphill, because remember it's below our eye level, like so. So you end up with this converging triangle type shape with the distant buildings going smaller at this end, bigger at this end. Hopefully you've all managed to capture that. Okay. Then the next thing is we've got some, we've got a slight amount of two point perspective. And what that basically means is, is that we've got some surfaces, the roofs going in this direction, going turn towards the right. So what we have to do is we have to figure out where those roofs are roughly going down to. And I feel as though <clears throat> they're coming not quite as steeply over this way. So we, they're going down towards the right. These are going down towards the left. This is going down towards the right hand side. And anything higher up the roof would go down towards the right even more steeply. Okay, so that's easy peasy. Everybody's got that hopefully. Now, the next thing I'm going to try and figure out is where my boat is. And my boat is starting, and that's one of the reasons for putting this cross in. I crossed it roughly at the tip of the boat. So the boat is starting about there. And the head of my little figure is actually on my eye level over here somewhere. Now, what I don't know at this point is how wide that boat is. So I'm going to have to make a guess. If you've got your measuring tools, you could just measure it um, and kind of go straight on or it, uh, make it a little bit larger. I haven't really set a scale here, so I'm just going to guess it um, for today. Just Because obviously we did quite a complicated drawing and measuring exercise last time. So this time I want to keep it a bit simple. And what I'm going to do this time is try and look at the abstract shapes. So I'm going to try to look at the shape that the um the boat is making against this line as i kind of come down so let's have a look so the boat comes down to about there and the boat has got some perspective to it as well it's on a slight incline so it's going uphill so it's going uphill this way okay almost not quite as um acutely as the uh, building line. Oh, I've just dropped my rubber, sorry, one second. Let me grab that back. So it's pretty much the same line as the where the buildings are meeting the um, uh, the water line. So that's kind of coming across there. Now if I look at the shape that's made um, here, so this would be the edge and then kind of coming up kind of makes this funny triangle shape in there for the front of the boat then the boat kind of comes downhill and then it comes in a bit and then let's find where so for the moment i'm just going to draw it as a straight line the bottom of the boat i know there are some curves in there but for the moment it's just going to be a straight line and if what I might do is just take a quick measurement of the figure. So I'm just using my finger and thumb, and I'm just going to see how many times he goes into the boat. So one, two, three, four, four. About five times the little figure goes into the boat. So let's just, so this head's going to be on there. So it's got to be about five times. So let's do that. So one, two three four five so that'll be a bit long so it needs to come back a bit so it needs to come about there i think so let's do it again one two three four five roughly about right okay that's fine so the back of the boat is going to be somewhere here and it's quite quite a lot lower than the front so can't bring that too high kind of comes in there and then we're already into our little figure which is going to be sitting sitting in here 
coming down. Just rough where he is at the moment. We'll do some work on that in a bit. So we've got an arm. And then he's got a stick or something coming down. Down there. Okay, that's fine. Then we've got a line coming off his back. Going slightly uphill. And then that thing comes forwards towards the bow. And then this line comes down, 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 down. And then from the bow, it then comes all the way back below that other line towards the back of the boat. Okay. Then I'm going to try and find now where this orange building is so this is the bow of the boat so inside that we've got a pole which comes up which this orange house is sitting on and that comes down to our water line and i know there's a boat covering it but we'll just assume that that's the water line there and that comes up to about so let's just have a look so the distance from the top of the bow of the boat to the water line is about the same. So the distance from there to there is about the same as from there to where the top of that pole goes. So we'll just do that. And then we've got some angle now. So this is where we start to get into our perspective. So where that balcony is. So remember, we've already said that our point is over here somewhere so all of these lines are going to get slightly less flat and going to go over this way okay and it's not an exact science um but it is going to have this kind of effect so all these lines slightly higher up are going to be more steep and if you really want to you could put a kind of a grid like that through it um if it helps you to give you some of those um, some of those points. So this pole comes to there and then it kind of comes down on the far side of the pole. It comes up and then we've got the front edge and that comes back down. And then above that we've got the balcony. So again it's higher up so it'll be slightly steeper, only slightly, don't make it too steep. And then this is where we're then going into the condition where we're in a two point perspective where this side of the, um, the plinth is going, is facing us this way. This is facing us that way. So this one has to go downhill to the right. Okay, not to the left. Otherwise, you'll never make it feel as though um, it's jutting out. It'll always feel like it's sitting up. So then we've got a nice big pole coming down here, which again comes down to our water line. So we'll just put that in roughly, just rub that out. <clears throat> And then we're into some sort of bit of plastic or something covering the uh, covering that up, so we can't really see. But there's an edge there, and then there's the other part of the balcony, which is coming again downhill. So it's coming in this direction, similarly to this one, and it comes to the back of the house. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure that distance from the where I think the opening of the house is to this pole, to that distance there, and check it against how many times it goes into my boat. So let's just measure that. And it goes into my boat one, two, three, four, almost five times exactly. So Let's do that. So one, 
two, three, four, five. There we go, it's not too bad. So perhaps just a teensy bit longer. That then becomes the edge of the wall. The balcony can come to there. And then we've got the covering coming here and it comes up and then it comes back down in this direction again so it's higher than this line and higher than that line so the rule basically states that this has to be more steep than that more steep than that but less steep than this and obviously this one's not steep enough so that needs to come down a bit more. so there we are comes down then follow that line through, that gives me the line of that one. Comes up, <clears throat> straight, and then we can figure out roughly where the roof line is now, which is gonna be about there, coming to the back, and then comes forwards. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so from about here, we've then got an angle which goes up towards our apex. So I'm going to check that angle. Oh, I keep banging the wire, sorry. So that angle is coming to about there. So that then becomes my um, start at the apex of that roof. So I'll just do about another five minutes and then I'll stop and let you catch up. So then this part then is coming back downhill again. And as I've say, stated earlier, because it's steeper than this one, or sorry, higher up, higher up than this one, this one, this one, this one, got to be slightly more steep. Okay, only marginally. It's not, not, you don't need to make it too big a jump, but just have a little bit more angle. And then if I look at this pole, come up, that gives me the, it's about halfway into the center of that, so that the other bit of the roof comes up. And that's coming up at the same angle as this one. So at the same angle, so you can just nick that angle and come across so that we get this zigzag kind of thing, so zigzag. And then the far side of it, if I take a measurement, or sorry, an angle, is coming down to about there. And that gives me the other side of it. And then the top of the roof is coming downhill over here. <clears throat> about there okay just make sure that's in the right place there's a little bit of a board there got a line that comes up and then let's find the angle for this part of the roof which comes down to there now interestingly where these triangles um, on the roof must look to whether this side is higher or lower than this side and <clears throat> obviously in the reference this side of the triangle or the apex is lower than the right side of the triangle so we must make sure that when we draw it that this side is lower than the right side okay so then that angle will come down like so. If you have this side higher than that side, so say I stopped it there, it's never gonna feel like it's twisted into the distance. So you have to be careful of that. So then that comes down here as well. And then in here, we've got some small internal shapes, which are going at the same angle as this part of the roof. 
which gives us some depth to make it feel like it's overhanging the um, the building. And then we can just put a few of those little lines in. There's something going on there. I don't know what that is, but got a line coming down there, which actually is going all the way to the back. We can just put that in. Right. If I'm looking at it again, is too steep, so I need to um, make that less steep. It's got, it's starting to go uphill too far, so that needs to flatten out. So I'm going to bring that down, and then we've got a little, um, I don't know what it is, it's like a staircase, which is coming off of that. So let's just put a little box in there which should come to the end of the railing, which is about there. And then that goes across to the other part of the railing, which goes down there, okay. And then this pole continues on up into the building. And I need to make that straighter because that's wonky. Coming down all the way up to the underside of this shape so this shape kind of comes downhill and then you've got this next bit of funny um whatever it is oh so just drawn that wrong let's do that again <laughs> so this will come across down and then it'll have a front there because I think it carries on through to the other side in there. Okay, that's fine. Won't fiddle with that too much. Then we've got the um, front part of this. I think it must be like an awning. And now this doesn't follow the line. This edge doesn't really follow the line of perspective because the awning is at an angle, funny angle. Um, so it kind of makes its own rules up and that comes out to about where the edge of that starts and then that comes back and then goes back up to the corner here something like that and then this line then does go back into and this is where you get a funny condition because Although this is the end of the, that surface, um, if you follow that line through, it almost makes a straight line into perspective with the next part of, the, of the, um, this surface, which is actually going in a different direction. So this is facing over this way, but this is facing down that way, but the line continues all the way through because it's at the same angle. And that's where it can get a little bit confusing sometimes so you just have to be careful careful of that uh, and that comes down to about so we need to bring that roof through there and that comes to so I'm going to relate that to my boat and that comes down to the front of the boat about there so it's about like perhaps a little bit long can knock that back a bit so that turns down over here that part of the roof and that comes back up this way and then connects there on the underside of that which we can't really see and then we've got this shape here and that comes out past that as i just said to about about here okay so then that comes back and connects up with that thing there and this follows underneath the roof and then we've got another funny little shape again at the same angle coming downhill coming downhill which is another little piece of, of roofing. 
coming off of that. And then we've got a pole which connects all of this together and comes all the way down straight and then almost meets our boat. Mm, yeah, almost. So then we've got the small pole here coming down. And that's going to meet a bit of railing in a minute. And then it continues down to the waterline. Now let's get into this slightly more tricky area where we've got all these steps. So I'm going to have to simplify this. So I've got a staircase coming down here. And these, so any of those straight lines are going to follow the same perspective as the other lines that we've already established going in that direction, but just slightly less steep as they um, come down. So then this line goes straight up and then it goes behind that step, behind that step, behind that step to give us our staircase. <clears throat> and then we've got the angle that comes down this way which is where it's connecting to. Okay, and then we've got another bit of decking below this piece here. And that comes uphill again, across to about there, looking at the distance. And then we've got another vertical coming down, all the way down to our boat, <clears throat> which comes right down to there. And then this pole carries right the way up to the roof line. Oh no, it doesn't. It carries up to just below this balcony. And then the railing on this one comes down downhill and then meets our boat at this point. And that comes down as well. Through there. And then the other side of the railing comes down through the peak of the boat. Oops, a bit steeper about there and then comes through the other side like so and then we've got a downhill bit there <clears throat> which is the underside of the bit of decking and then I think there's a first step somewhere there another step another step I'm not going to put all them and I'm just going to kind of just assume that they're carrying on all the way down. And then there's a bit of board that goes behind all of that. <clears throat> just give me something to connect to. And then there's actually a plank that this is sitting on connected to this pole. So that goes that way like that okay next then we need to put in the bit of railing that comes down here which kind of connects to the end of the pole there and if I follow that through that gives me the height of where I need to start the bit of railing. So if I follow that line through, because obviously that railing there and this railing here at the same same height, it's just that this one over here starts higher because of the perspective. And then this will go downhill towards the towards the left. Obviously this one is going to be more steep than this one. 
and then that comes down and then the bottom of it will be again going down but less steep like that <clears throat> next then we can start off by putting in a little bit of the next house which starts from this railing and comes out and then the edge of it actually starts at the edge of that piece of roof which we've already put in so that then starts to form the side of this next building and that can come up a bit higher the roof line is starting from about there again going in the opposite direction so this roof here now is the same as this roof up here so the surface is going downhill um, comes out to about there and then we can actually find the angle which is coming up roughly to about there just checking it and that comes down like so which coincidentally is about the same as this one not far off the pitch on that roof and then if we take a line off this now we need to come back to just about above that piece there and then connect that up oops that's wasn't a very straight line there we are <clears throat> just straighten that up a bit very good my left hand on that one okay and then i can look to find the other side of the apex now so if i follow the line through follow 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 it's going downhill as we've already discussed same as this one so over here now I know that I've got another apex or the um, another piece to that triangle and I think it comes to about there. So what I will do is I'll then look down to see where it meets my boat and it meets the boat just about halfway. So perhaps my boat is mm, possibly a little bit short, but it's about halfway down the boat. And then I can take an angle up to the top of the apex, like so. <clears throat> and then this triangle will feel like it's facing over in that direction. Then we just do the same as we did with this roof. We'll put an internal line to give this piece some width like so and then that puts this bit of the wall inside the edge of this triangle and then i can take a angle coming off of there which is the awning again and that's going down and then it comes actually to about there and it needs to come with some width to it there's a bit of width to that awning so that comes in there and then that will go away this way that will come back it goes past the end of the house and then you've got that coming back this way and then we've got some nice pieces that actually hold that awning up and they come just inside the end of the roof so that comes down we've got one in the middle which is about where the apex meets so coming down that way all at the same angle and then we've got one at the end here coming down 
like so. And again, the one at this end is higher than the one at this end. So there should still be that feeling of that line going through. And that should really meet the edge of the building, but I can't know what happened there. Maybe I haven't got it quite steep enough. Let's do that again. So it should come back to about here. Oops. And then that will come down. This can come in. Okay. Then the base of this house continues through. It's a bit jaggedy. And then there's an opening at this point, which comes up behind that up to where it meets almost meets that piece and then it goes down here again to there and then the edge of the building is actually just inside this which comes down to about there and then there's some funny little balcony thing there, but we'll probably make that a bit simpler. And then we've got some stairs coming off of this building. And they come down. So if, to figure out where they come down to, um, I'm going to draw a line from this edge coming down because it comes just inside the end of this um, awning. So I think the base of it needs to come there and it's pretty much down to where our eye level was. So then the line can come up like that. And then the other side of it will come from there coming down again to the platform, which is going to be about here. And then we can actually start off that platform. So there's a big support pole, which is vertical almost coming straight down to about there. And that follows the idea of this water line, which is coming through there. And then there's a bit of wood or a board coming out this way with some widths to it. Can't really tell totally because there's a net over it. And that comes out to about, so it comes past, past there and it comes to about there, I think. Might need to make my boat a little bit longer, not quite long enough. And then that comes down again to where the water line is. So the water line is coming through here. The pole comes up. And then we've got a piece that's coming from about here, which is pretty much directly under that roof line there. Comes all the way down. And then this becomes <coughs> the bit of balcony railing, whatever you want to call it. And that'll come back towards my steps. And then there's some makeshift, step, makeshift steps coming down to the water line here. 
and they're just like planks of wood. Kind of like so. <laughs> and then this staircase needs a bit of width to it. So we'll just bring that up. And then we've got our rungs, which are again, following our idea of perspective. All the way through. And that comes down to about there. Okay. <clears throat> Underneath that, there's another support pole coming down, making another little triangle. And that goes behind this netting, so we can't really see what's going on there. A piece of netting just in there. And some blocks and something going on underneath. And we've got another support pole here in the corner of this building coming down. I'll just put that in. Right, next part then. I think what I'm going to do now is instead of continuing all these buildings, because it's pretty much a replication of what I've done so far in this, it's just that they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as we kind of go away. I think for the next section, I will start to concentrate on um, making these shapes make a bit more sense. So we're going to put a bit of shading on to the um these elements to try and figure out what's actually going on there so the first thing i'm going to do is just start to shade in the um this this rectangle shape that i've got going on here i'm going to use a slightly bigger bigger um graphite stick for this just to speed it up i'm going to fill all of this in and it actually gets lighter i'm just pressing lighter as i come to the far edge. And a little trick for um, getting a straight edge is if you just hold a ruler against the edge that you want to shade up to, and then you just bash the pencil into it, it will give you a straight edge for your shading, like so. And then the railings come down this way and then for the shapes in the railings i'm just going to put some little triangles so that one actually comes past there and then carries on down so we've got some little triangles in the railings and they're in opposite directions i'm not going to put all of them in just put a couple in just to give the idea And then we've got a couple of straight edges there. Okay, this needs to come darker. So I'm just going to cross hatch through that. And then around my pole. And then on the inside of this, I've actually missed off my support beams, which need to come down. Down like that. And then there's another one in the middle here which comes down to there. Just put that in. And then there's one more over here which comes down that way. Oops, that's a bit too steep. Okay, <clears throat> and then I'll shade in this front section. So that it starts to get a little bit of three dimension to it. 
going to use some slightly heavier lines um, in places just to pick out certain elements. So that comes down that way. And then the front of this awning needs shading in as well. And the front of this awning is actually about the same tone as this one in the inside. So I'm going to cross hatch through that one as well. And then we've got a bit of the far building coming through. So just simplify that. So I'm just going to make that all one tone as well. Shade that bit in. And then this carries on through and under the bit that's over the top. Let's shade all this in so that we can see that it's underneath. The front edge of the awning here darker. Just change the angle to go backwards. And then actually we can have a nice dark line just to show that bit of shadow on the front of it. We've got some darker elements up here. <clears throat> we'll get these in. And then I can cross hatch. Oops, let's do it this end. It's that four H. Coming back. that way all the way through to the where it meets the main part of the building got some line going up that way I'm just gonna make that a bit stronger and there got a very dark shape up here little triangle I'm just going to fill that in. And then we've got the roof going down there. Oops, a bit wonky. Underneath this piece here, we've got a lot of tone, which we can start to get in. Just firm up that bottom edge, and then it's darker coming back this way. And shade that in as well. And then I'm going to put a light bit of shading through this one because it's not as light as other elements, but it's also not as dark as the darker bits. Just a little bit of shading there. We've actually got some different colored panels over here and a window. Stuart, can I ask a question? Yep. With the shading, mm -hmm. How much of that can you transfer over? Are you using tracing papers? Uh, yeah, so the shading won't really go across. Um, the, sh the, the tone is more for um, the, the drawing side of things. So you're figuring out or trying to figure out what's darker than what, what's lighter than what. 
but when you trace it we won't really be tra we won't really be transferring that okay um, so it's it's more of hand eye coordination exercise more than anything mm -hmm. just to you know kind of improve your drawing um, Thank you. but yeah that won't really come across all right um so there's a bit of that going on there we've got the this sheet thing which kind of comes blowing in the wind type effect coming down which also covers up a good proportion of what's going on underneath the building, which is quite handy. So we'll lose all of that. And then we've got a shape here, which we can get in. Underneath, oh no, that's too high. Getting lost myself now, that comes underneath there. And then there's a plank coming this way down that comes over there somewhere and then we can shade that shape in and then we've got lots of dark under here which I can put in just to show up the bottom of that um, Bit of the balcony so coming down, and then there's poles and bits and pieces all under here. Now, when we get to the staircase, obviously, this is going to hopefully be helpful in showing us what some of these elements are actually doing. So there's a shape that comes across and then down, and then there's the balcony that comes back that way. Let's just make that into one shape. As it comes down to that pole. And then there's a little gap and then it's dark again before we get to the staircase. So the staircase is here. Like so. And then there's some shapes in the actual balcony itself. So we'll put a couple of those in just to show that there's some thing going on there. There's a bit of railing coming through there and then for the uprights i'm just going to put a couple of dark marks just to break up that shape in the staircase we've got some darks here And then we've got the railing coming down oops, towards our boat. And our boat is about here. And that comes down and then down to the water line. And he's got some shapes in him as well so that comes up and then comes in and then up to the front and then there's another shape that comes over down like so and then I'm just going to shade in some of these shapes to make them a bit more positive. So there's one there. This comes down to the water edge. And then 
the boat I'm assuming, I can't really tell on this boat, but most boats have a little bit of curvature to the hull. So I'm going to make this line come a bit flatter. So off of my, so this is the line we set of the boat going this way. But to make the boat feel as though it's sitting in the water, I need to give it some slightly different angles. So this one is flatter, so this one's going over this way. Then I'm going to start to curve the line a little bit, so it's going like that. And then I'm going to curve the line again back onto roughly the line of the that the boat should actually be on. Like that. And then at the back it starts to curve up a bit, just marginally. So we come in like that. And then the actual back of the boat could come out a bit more. And there's like a little diamond shape at the back of the boat. <clears throat> and that kind of comes down. And then we're into our little figure. Uh, so actually, I was looking. I can't really tell what the back of the boat is actually doing. It must be wide, quite wide at the back there, it looks like. So there's a plank coming this way and then coming down. And then this then comes forwards to form the far side of the, the boat. And then this piece comes back this way to form the inside edge which comes all the way back to about there and then there's an angle that comes back on itself and then it comes straight and then up to the base of that diamond And then the figure is squatting down. So we've got this foot, which, so his knee is actually, yeah, so his foot needs to come back a bit. So it's underneath his knee. So his knee is about where his shoulder is, coming that way. The other knee, closer knee, is going to be slightly lower. Coming back that way, his arm, shoulder, back of the head is going to be coming up this way, there, Let's lose that bit. So his ear is going to be somewhere there. And then his eyes are going to be higher. Nose, mouth, jaw, chin line, shoulder. Then we've got his hand coming up to whatever that is that he's holding, probably the oar or whatever it is. Coming down, and his other hand is in here. And then goes back, coming down there. So his other foot. Okay, that's fine. Coming through, and there's some bits of timber that way and then I can shade in this side of the boat and I'm doing it at an angle like this because I'm trying to say that the boat is curving down to the water and then as I come closer to the front of the boat I'm going to start to make the shading more vertical
and even start to curve the opposite way. Just to give the illusion that there's some curvature in those surfaces. This is going to be quite flat, going back that way. All of this in here can just be vertical shading. Like so. Put the edge of the boat in a bit stronger. There's a nice line coming through and up that way and another line coming down like so. We'll just shade our little figure in. Just to get a bit of tone on him. Now moving back to the building on this side, we've got tone in here, another triangle, which comes down. <laughs> and in our staircase here, there are some poles, but I'm just gonna put a couple of suggestions of those in and then just fill the rest of the shape. So leaving room for the actual um, the tread which is going to be going the other way. So we can just put a bit more shading through here. like so, and then just knock that pole down because that's too bright. The, there's a little bit more dark just in there as well. Under this awning we can bring that through now. So this is the second part of the awning. So we've got dark in here. And then there's actually some lines coming off of this building back through. Got that roof line coming back through. Underneath there. This is actually underneath the awning. It's gonna be dark. This follows through. And it all just kind of merges in the dark back here. So if you can't really see very clearly what it's doing, then just try and paint the shadow shape or draw the shadow shape that's actually there, rather than try and make it up. And then we've got another piece of awning here and then we've got another beam coming out this way like these ones <coughs> put that in a bit stronger there Now this is a shadowy part of that building. So this part is in shadow, but it's a light, it's almost like a white kind of color. So the shading has to be a lot lighter. So I'm just pressing quite lightly with my pencil. Just to put some tone through there, but not as much, not as dark as the darker bit above it. And then we can actually lose all of this there and there's lots of bits and pieces going on on the inside there but it's a bit complicated so i'm going to just simplify it a little bit so this pole is actually lighter than the rest of it just put that in 
I'm just going to make this into some railings to the verticals. Not worry too much about the fiddly detail. Uh, we've got the door window there. I need to put a bit more tone through the side of this building. For the edge, got some folds in this billowing shape. We can just put a couple of those in. Perhaps there's another big fold there. On that shape, we've got some nets and bits and pieces hanging down. So let's put those in. comes down and then actually there's a couple of boats when I haven't really seen them. There's a couple more little boats just through here which kind of hide the bottom of, of this building and they come to just underneath that window and quite narrow. bow of that boat is the little flat but then you've got the angle of the hull bring that up a little bit and then this net comes down to meet it so this netting has actually got some folds in it we can just put some of those shade marks in and then just knock it all down. And then we've got a shape in here, which is dark. That plank's lighter, darker, I should say. Like that. The front plane of this plank should be darker. And we've got some bits of wood and all sorts going on back there, which we'll just ignore. Just going to shore up the edge of that pole. <coughs> Coming underneath here, we've also got another pole coming down to shade that in down to the water line and then we've got some boxes and paraphernalia on that boat Another pole going there, it's another triangle. More beams. The bottom line of this building is actually about here. Going that way. So that's that. Then we'll just Show that in there. Another dot there. So our stairs go up here and then they come across the front. And then we've got railings in the background here. So again, I'm just going to put some verticals.
just to make that into railings. And we'll do the same on the front here. Just coming across. So about there, a bit darker in there. Break that up. Okay, and then on this building, we can continue that lighter tone through the side of the building up to the roof line. And the roof line actually can come darker. And then we've got this corrugated edge. And then the front of this building is actually quite dark at the top. Put some shading vertically down. And then the lower part of it is lighter. So press, still in the same direction, but just press lighter with the pencil. Just to get the front edge in. And then we've got some nice darks for the window inside. in here and also over here is very very dark and coming down the inside edge of the wall Got the front lip of the awning this could be shaded in Put in the front edge of that. Just give a few plank marks through the front there. Some little bits of detail to show that it's corrugated. A few angles coming this way to show the pitch of the roof. Perhaps a couple on this roof as well, just to show that the pitch is going in that direction. 